Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining me on Replay. I'm going to wait for some people to sign on live. And, and while we're waiting, if you would, let me know where you're watching from. And um, I hope you're having a great Friday wherever you're at. I want to talk to you about relationship, personal relationship. Who is God to you? How do you know God? How does he know you? Those are the things, the questions, I think, of life. What is the meaning of life? It really equates to who is God? Is there a God? Um, why am I here? Does he care? Um, why does he let things happen? Why, you know, all these questions come. And if we're, if we're really saved, if we're really born again, there's a connection with this God. And I want to share that with you today. It's very powerful. A uh, moment we just had, me and Beverly were doing a devotion together and talking. And God give me this. I wasn't going to do a video today. It was just really, we got a board meeting at 930. We don't have a lot of time. But I just thought, you know, this is powerful. She's like, you need to do a video. So I want to share this with you. First of all, I got, I got two places I want to read. Well, three really, but I want to just quote one from memory. And thank you for joining me, by the way. And please share this video. This is very important. I really believe this is going to help somebody. And also comment where you're watching from. You may have comment every time and you're saying, I, I do it all the time. Do it. Do it every time. Because when you comment, it gets it more in the news feed. And we, little, we like to see it. We like to see the different places that the Lord is helping us reach. The Bible, most Christians know the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. But I want to read this to you. In Revelations chapter 16, chapter 19, verse 16. Revelations, Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. Talking about Jesus. Listen to this. It says, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Everybody right now put Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Right now in your comment, you just type it. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Would you put that in the comment? Because, and you say, well, you may be watching say, well, I'm not a Christian. I don't feel like I should. It doesn't, it matters that you're not a Christian spiritually, but as far as that scripture is concerned, it doesn't matter because he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You can't change that. The world can't change that. He is what he is. He, he says, I am that I am. He is the King of Kings. He is the only God. There is no other God, y'all. Confucius, Buddhist, Buddhism, uh, boy, I'm killing some algorithms now. Um, uh, Allah, all these other gods are not, not the God. Now look, the Bible says there's gods. It actually says that. There's little g's. But there's only one God. And we know him as, as Jehovah. We know him through Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all in one. But there's many people today, and this is what I'm trying to get at with this video. And again, please share it, comment where you're watching from. How do you know him? Is God a king to you? Do you look at him as he's like a king? He says he's king of king and lord of lords. So do you look at him as king? Do you look at him as the Lord? And here's what I mean by that. When we go to Romans 8, and this is where I want to read. I want to read this to you. And I've just read what he calls himself in Revelation. The whole world will know him as that. The universe. It says in Romans chapter 8, which is an awesome chapter, full of all kind of truth. It says, for as many, in verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then Heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. Now, here, here's where we're going. What do you call him? You call him king? You call him Lord? Or do you call him daddy? There's a difference. 
when you come to the throne of heaven, the throne of God, and there's God in his majesty, undescribable beauty, undescribable throne. Revelation does describe what it looks like. You come into the presence of the throne room. Do you bow your knee and say, king? Do you look at God as a king? Look at God as someone that is not really personally, intimately in your life, but he does know you. Maybe you work in his court. Maybe you're a part of his uh, government somehow. Maybe you're a teacher in Sunday school. Maybe you're a preacher. Maybe you're a song. A song. And you look at God as I'm a member of the court. I'm a member of the kingdom. And he's the king. And I'm going to bow my knee when I come into his presence. I'm going to acknowledge him as king. That's a good thing, right? That That's a word. He's worthy of that. And that shows great respect and admiration. But here's what you're missing. When I go into the throne room of God, when I go, of course I would want to bow my knee to him. Of course I'd call him king and Lord. But you know what's more important? That I can walk into his throne room and I can walk up to where he's at and I can crawl up in his lap and I can call him daddy. That's what I'm talking about. Do you know him as a king with great authority and power or do you know him as your daddy? That's what the scripture is saying. It's powerful in Romans 8, 28, not Romans 8, 28, but in Romans 8, it says we call him Abba Father, my daddy. If your relationship with God is based on how good he treats you, does he answer your prayers? Does he show you kindness? Then you'll never have a full relationship with God. You'll always have no joy and you'll always be um, persuaded by your surroundings. But when you love him as a father, as a daddy, and you know more importantly that he loves you and that you don't even have the love that you should have except that he give you to that. You say, where's that at? The Bible says the Holy Spirit has shed the love of God abroad in your heart. The salvation experience, when it happens, when you're born again, there is a connection with you and God that can never be changed. You are sealed. The Bible says the Holy Spirit seals you. There is a connection. You become a child of the king. You're not a member of the court. You're not a member of the government. You're a child. I just read it to you, a joint heir with Christ. God doesn't look at me as his lowly servant that comes from the other side of the kingdom, bringing him well wishes. Although he's worthy of that, don't get me wrong. God looks at me as his child, a part of the family, royalty. That doesn't make me proud. That doesn't make me think I'm better than anybody else. But I'm going to tell you what it does. It settles me to know that no matter what kind of bull crap happens in my life, no matter how bad things get, no matter what God allows in my life, nothing can change the fact that God loves me and that I love him. If I have to choose between my family and God, I choose God. If I have to choose between my wife and God, I choose God. Why? Because I'm super spiritual? No. There is a connection that God gave me. When I was born again, I know him. He knows me. If I was to fall in the abyss of hell somehow, if it was possible, God wouldn't leave me there. Come on, somebody. God would get me. He loves me too much to leave me. He loves me too much to abandon me. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He can't do it because he's not a liar and he does not change. He says he's the God of, he's the Lord God. He changes not. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. I could go on and on and on. God will not abandon his child, his children. He will never abandon you. Now, my question again comes at you like this. You may have been saved for years. You may be on the church row. I feel the spirit of God. I quit saying that, but I can't help it. I just feel the power of God. You may have been raised in church all your life, but the God that you know is this great big king that sits way up there in heaven somewhere and not really intimate in your life and you are actually a little afraid of him. There's nothing wrong with a reverent fear of God. We should, but to fear God because of you don't know if he cares or loves you is a, not a fear. 
that you need to have. That is a fear that does, a spirit of fear that God did not give you. A reverentness, a reverent fear of God. It's because you know even though he has all power and sovereign to do whatever he wills, he still loves you. And there's a reverence to him and a fear there. Romans 8, I want to go. Romans 8 is, is good. It's just good. Toward the end, it says in verse 37, Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Loves us. Stuff's going to happen. Bad things are going to happen. You're going to pray and then prayers won't be answered as far as what you can see. But you don't know. Romans 8, 28 says all things work together for the good. All things. That means the bad, all things. God is looking at your life right now. He's looking at you, whoever's watching, and he's saying he understands the intimate secrets of your heart. He's, he, he's unlocked everything, and there is nothing hid from God. And at the same time, every, I think, I don't know how many billion or one billion or however many people on this planet, at the same time, he sees every single heart, intimate secret, desire, passion, everything in all people around the world, past and present and now. There's nothing he doesn't see. It's hard for us to understand this, but it's powerful because when God sees everything, that means Romans 8, 28 really comes into perspective because he's doing something in my life right now that might affect somebody in the UK. He's doing something in your life right now that might affect somebody in Georgia. I don't know because it's a spider web effect. We're all connected and we have no idea what our struggle and our trials and our victories mean to someone that we never meet because it touched somebody that touched somebody that touched somebody that touched somebody. But through it all, no matter what we face and no matter what we go through, you need to understand something. And I'm not trying to convince you. I'm telling you a fact. I'm telling you a fact right now, no matter what you're facing. And that fact is where he said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't call him king, although he's my king. I don't call him Lord, although he is my Lord. I call him daddy. I call him my father because I've been born again. I've been born again January 2003 on that golf course the conviction and the weight of my sin and the burden and the, just not even really knowing who God was but always hearing about this God. We call him king. We call him Lord. Ever kneel bow, but not ever knee that bows can call him father. You need to understand something today. A relationship with Jesus Christ is personal. When it happens, there's a love. There's a connection that comes in. It's the Holy Ghost, and he gives you the love for the Father, and he sheds the love of the Father in your heart. You know without a shadow of a doubt that you're a child of the king. There ain't a devil in hell that can take it away. There's not any, there's no one that can come between you and him. He loves you. And you call him father. You call him daddy. Yes, he's the king. You bet you better believe he's the king. He's the king of king and the Lord of Lords. But you know what? He's my daddy. My daddy owns the whole world. The whole universe. People say, I wonder if there's UFOs. Well, if there is, my daddy knows exactly where they're at and who they are, knows them by name. Let me tell you something. I serve the one that doesn't love me because I'm good, doesn't love me because I'm faithful. He loves me because I'm his child. And then there's nothing that can change. I can't be unborn. I can't be unborn from being his child. And you can't either if you know him. If you don't know him today, and you've heard about Christianity, or maybe you were raised in church, but you just don't have what I'm talking about. And you're like, I know him as Lord. He is God. I believe he's God. The Bible says the devils believe and tremble that he's God. But they're not saved. What's the difference? Is it acknowledging him as king? Is it acknowledging him as Lord? What is the difference? The difference is an intimate relationship that you can't manufacture. You can't fake it. You can't work it up. It's a supernatural experience, an encounter with God that he calls, Jesus said, being born again. That's it. How do you have that? How do you get it right now? How do you have that? Wherever you're at, just put your heart and your eyes toward Christ spiritually. 
Lord, I'm a sinner. I know you're speaking to me. I feel your presence right now. And I know you do because I feel it. And you say, I know you're speaking to me. I don't have that relationship. I have that. I, I know you're the king. I know you're God. I believe, Lord, but I want you to be my father. I want you to be my daddy. I want to have that. Lord, when I walk into the throne room of heaven, I don't walk in as some, I have to be announced and have to make an appointment because he's the king. No, it, one of your children's out here, let him come. And you crawl up in his lap and say, Daddy. That's what God wants. That's what he's always wanted. It's never been about separation. When the sin come into the world, God had to separate himself from man because no sin can dwell in his presence. But when Jesus said it is finished on that cross and he bowed his head, he died, he laid his life down for you and me, the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. That was God that ripped that veil because he didn't want anything between him and you. He wants you. He doesn't want the world. He doesn't want money. He doesn't want power and fame. He's got everything he's ever going to need without us. He wants you. Right now where you're at, call out to him, Lord, I'm a sinner. I confess that I'm a sinner. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. His name is Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose again the third day. I'm going to put my faith in you. I receive you as my Savior. And I'm going to follow you. If you made that decision today, if you prayed that, and meant it from your heart, that's between you and God. I want you to do something that's going to make it public right now. I want you to type in, I am just one. Because this video is for one person. I know this is for somebody. I am just one. And when you do that, people will see it. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. And you come before my Father and the Holy Angels. Look, Jesus said he's my Father. Jesus didn't call him King. He said, when you come before my Father, we know he's the King of King and Lord of Lords. He's my daddy. Is he yours? Don't be ashamed. If God has spoke to your heart today and you made a decision for Christ, you asked him to forgive you and you received Christ today as your Savior, you type in, I am just one. Make it public. doesn't matter what people think. What matters is you're making a statement for God. I'm not ashamed of you. He was not ashamed when he hung on the cross. He was not ashamed of you. He loves you. And he'll always love you. Nothing can change that. I am just one. I'm I am just one, Lord. Thank you for dying for me. He loves me as if I was the only human being on the planet, and the same is true for you. I am just one. I know you love me. I know you won't leave me in hell. If I die in my sins, he has no choice. If I die apart from Jesus Christ, he has no choice. But if I receive him today as my Savior, and he, instead of me calling him king, he becomes my father, then I'm born again. And if it was possible, which it's not, but if it was possible for me to slip off somewhere and to get into hell, he's coming to get me. I'm talking about a father's love. I'm not talking about a superficial presidential king love. I'm talking about an intimate father's love for his child. I am just one. Are you? Are you? Call out to him, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I put my faith in you. I believe you died on a cross for me. That cross was my cross, Lord, but you bared it for me. Your blood was spilled all over the ground because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So you splattered the ground with your blood for me because you love me. And then you were buried in the tomb and on the third day, you got up and walked out by the same Holy Ghost power that's in me today. I receive you, Lord. If that's you, you type in, I am just one. The second reason I ask you to type in, I am just one, besides making it public, is we see it, we're going to message you, and we're going to give you a free Bible and a package of literature to help you get started on your Christian walk because the people that give to this ministry is free. We call, we message you, we get your address, and we send you a packet. I don't know how many we've sent out, but a bunch over the, over the years. And it's because people have done that this ministry. But more important than that, it's because you made a decision today to put your faith in Jesus Christ. You went from being on the church roll. Come on now. Church roll. Raised in church. All of a sudden, he's not just king. He's not just Lord. He's my father. There's a connection 
that cannot be broken. And that that connection is a father's love for his child, a supernatural father and a supernatural love. I know that there are some that won't agree with everything I'm saying. I know there are some that are going to say, well, it's by your ability that he, you, you, you have this this personal relationship, you have to somehow hold on. Guys, I'm going to be honest, just straight up honest with you. There's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. Nothing. There's nothing you can do to make him love you more. The Bible says God is love. The greatest gift that's ever been given when God bestowed his love upon us because we are lost and he wants us to be with him no greater gift love than this than a man lay down his life for his friends Jesus laid his life down for us even when I was dead in my trespasses and sin he loved me even when I was doing all them things I shouldn't do he loved me even when I turned my back on him he loved me even when I blamed him for my problems he loved me even when I get mad and say you're not fair to me. He loves me. And somewhere deep in me, I cannot deny him. I cannot say that he doesn't exist. I cannot say that he doesn't love me. I can't. Because there's a connection. And it's that born again experience. The Holy Ghost is in me bearing witness that you're his son, that I'm his child. Do you have that? Do you really have that? I'm not trying to be do you really have that? You can get it if you want it. It's God's desire that you be born again. It's God's desire that you know him like I'm talking about. It's God's desire that when you walk into the glories of heaven, that you don't walk in as a, a visitor and say, well, you know, mind if I hang around? No. God wants you to walk in and say, I'm home. I'm home. This is where I belong. There's a reason you don't fit in down here. There's a reason nothing works out for you here. There's a reason that you feel like this world has just gone crazy. There's a reason. Because this ain't your home. You never were meant to stay here. You were meant to pass through and to come to heaven and be with God. Do you know him as king or do you know him as your father? Call out to Jesus in repentance. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I receive you as my Savior. I'm going to follow you. He died for you, rose again the third day. If you make this decision, again, type in I am just one so we can message you and send you a Bible and some package of literature to help you. Child of God, who's been struggling, you've been praying, you've been fasting, stuff ain't, but nothing's happening. You're You're mad. You're PO'd with God. You're mad. You won't say it because you're scared he'll strike you down. That's because you're looking at him as a king. You're looking at him as some being up there that wants to throw a bolt of lightning down because how can he care about you if he don't answer your prayers? How can he really care if he lets crap happen, chaos in your life? How can he care? I can't explain him. I don't understand him. But I know what his word says. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. God loves you in spite of your circumstances, in spite of what's happening. God loves you when you don't see answered prayer. God loves you when everybody else seems to be doing really well and you're not. And there is an intimacy with a child of God to where you know that. Now, if you're one of these people that don't know that, there's a problem. There's a problem. Because we don't talk about salvation in that regards a lot. A lot of times we talk about on the forefront. We want to get people saved, and that's, that's what we're supposed to do. But there is an assurance that you should have if you're saved. The Bible says the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we're the sons of God. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to have goosebumps and tingling? No. 
I used to think that's what it meant. I used to think when you, you know that feeling you get when the spirit's moving, everybody's like, ooh, I can feel God. My hair's standing up on my arm. Ooh, ooh. That's not what that means. It means there's a connection with me and him that cannot be broken. I feel it. I feel my connection with God. I can never be separated from him. That's the assurance of my salvation. Did you have that? Now, if you've been straying, and you've been running, and you made a decision for Christ one day, one night, and you know without a shadow of a doubt that you just don't have that closeness, you can always come home. You can always come home. If that's you, you say, I've been saved. I just feel so tired, spiritually drained, I don't even know if he even cares. But deep down, you know he does. Deep down, that connection, that born-again experience, still there. You know him. You're just, you're mad. You don't understand him. You're frustrated with life. Why would he leave me here? Why is things like that? God has never left you. Never will. And if you feel the Spirit of God drawing you and saying, it's time to come home. It's time. God has been with you all through everything you've been through. And he's saying, come. Come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come. He says, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. First John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So right now, child of God, ask him to forgive you for your straying away. He says he's married to the backslider. Forgive me, Lord. This day, I make my profession public. I acknowledge you've dealt with me. I acknowledge that I am a just one coming home. And I want you to type that in. I am just one coming home. I am just one coming home. And when you type in I am just one coming home, then we know that you're a child of God. You don't need a Bible. You don't need a package of literature, which we'd be glad to send you one anyway. But we know that you're making the decision, recon, recon, recommitting your faith, rededication. I am just one coming home. You're saying, I'm tired of playing. I'm tired of straying. The Bible says the prodigal son was a long way off in Luke 15. But when he turned to the father, what does it say? The father saw him from a long way off and ran to him and hugged him and kissed his neck and welcomed him in. Because he's not the king to this guy. It's his daddy. There's a difference. There's a difference when somebody says, oh, there's the king, he's coming. There's the king. But I say, there's my daddy. Yeah, he's the king. He is the king. Make no mistake about it. He's the king of king and lord of lords. Got the name on his hip. In Revelation 19.60. But I'm his, I'm his son. I got special privileges, special rights to see him when I want to. Talk to him all the time. We spend time together. That's the difference in salvation and religion. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be accepted when he is sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen.